Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day out there. And uh, welcome to yet another iOS application review. And in today's video, I'm going to review this app called My Movies. Uh, it's an application submitted to me by a student. His name is Leonardo Madro. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm just gonna call him Leo for today's video. But anyhow, he is a 21 year old student coming from Brazil. Uh, I think he's a student, but he might be working uh, full time already. But he tells me that he's been doing front end development for about three years. And in the past year, after kind of discovering this YouTube channel, as well as the website courses, he's been able to pick up iOS development and kind of just hop from front to end to mobile development. So for any of you guys that are wondering if it's hard to make this transition from one stack to another, well, I believe Leo is a kind of a living proof that is actually very easy to do this. And hopefully I am providing enough inspiration for you guys to actually make the jump. But anyhow, let's get into the application review right now. Okay, so basically the application My Movies allows you to kind of browse for movies that you would potentially want to watch. And so for example, someone like me, I don't really have a whole lot of time to watch movies because I'm producing all these darn YouTube videos. But uh, let's say I want to watch something because I'm lonely on a Friday night. I'm going to open up this application and just browse around for movies that uh, seem kind of interesting. So let's say I want to watch Blade Runner 2049, which is something that I actually want to do. Uh, I just want to click into that application to get the brief summary and information about this particular movie, right? So you kind of see when you click on the actual movie, it slides in all of this stuff like the cover art for the movie and the information such as the cast, the plot, and actually the duration is up at the very top there as well. So very nice. I really like animation. I feel like that adds a whole nother level to how much detail that the developer actually pays attention to. So good job there. I'll give you five stars uh, out of five, I think. But anyhow, I am going to go all the way down to this bottom section here. And you notice how if you scroll from left to right, you can actually go through this entire list in a horizontal fashion, right? So I believe this is a UI collection view with a lot of these cells that kind of work horizontally. Now, one little thing that I want to bring up here is that whenever you have padding on the left side, you want to make sure you don't cut off people's heads. So Ryan Gosling, you don't want to cut his head off like that. So you kind of want to make sure that the padding only applies to all the other elements than these horizontal lists. Uh, just a little small detail that you do have to watch out for. So really good stuff there. And uh, if you click into watch trailer in the middle, of that red button, you can actually get the trailer to show up, right? So you see this black screen here. Well, this is actually an AV player view controller, I believe it's called. And uh, if you hit the play button on the bottom there, you actually get the trailer to run. Now, it would have been nice if the trailer actually autoplay when this view came up, uh, but it doesn't do that right now. Hopefully Leo can fix that issue uh, in some of his future updates. Okay, so now I want to go over three things that I really like about the application. And then along the way, I'll point out some minor bugs that you might want to fix, Leo. Okay, so hopefully this helps uh, some of the students out there that are learning how to build out nice iOS applications. So let me go back and talk about the navigation of the entire application. Uh, I think it's done really well. Uh, that's because a lot of these tab bar buttons actually allow you to browse around to specific parts of the application. Now, you'll be surprised that a lot of people developing iOS apps don't really understand the basic and simplistic nature of these UI tab bar controllers. And the idea is you just want to provide your users a simple way of navigating back and forth between the specific workflows that you want your users to actually go through. Okay, so I think the navigation is done really, really well. Uh, there is, however, one bug to this navigation. So let me click into Coco. This is also a movie that I'm planning to watch pretty soon. And basically the bug is if I click into one of the actor circles right there, it brings up this page right here, right? And uh, you can't really click the movies up at the top. Well, maybe you can, but anyhow, if you go back, you tap the back button on the top left. You notice how the Coco text is kind of hovering above the other text. And if you go all the way up there, uh, Coco is kind of being obscured by the header image. So 
that is a slight bug that you do have to watch out for. And the other thing that's also nice about this screen that I forgot to mention is that when you scroll down like that, you actually get the scaling of the header. Let me just bring back Blade Runner and you see the scaling, it looks really, really nice. This is something that a lot of applications implement nowadays. So really good job getting that in. All right, so in terms of navigation, there's another slight bug that I find kind of annoying, which is you can't really swipe from the left side to go back. And that's kind of frustrating as a user because you have to reach all the way up to the top left corner and hit the back button manually which takes a little bit of time, it's kind of annoying, and uh, hopefully Leo can actually implement the correct back button style. And uh, basically the problem is that whenever you have these custom navigation bars up at the very top, you see the back, the plus, and the heart, I believe this is a custom little UI view component, and uh, you have to use the standard native UI navigation bar to actually get the back behavior with the swipe from the left side of the screen. So make sure to get that working. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the concept of pagination done correctly inside of your list views. So let me scroll all the way down to the last item in the list there, and you'll see once I get there, there's a small loader that comes up, and uh, basically within a couple of milliseconds, the data for the next set of movies will actually load up really quickly. So a really good job in getting pagination done correctly inside of your app. And uh, if you keep scrolling, you'll see that it's actually really, really quick to get the next set of movies inside of your list. Now, again, very, very nice. However, there's a small bug that occurs whenever you actually perform the pagination. And uh, basically the UI kind of hangs like that and it kind of skips whenever you load more movies. Uh, basically what's happening is you're doing the pagination on the UI thread and you want to make sure that you push all of that stuff onto the background thread instead so that you can perform the data load asynchronously and you know in turn that's not going to block the main UI thread allowing your users to actually continue to use your application. And uh, one huge problem with what's occurring right now is that let's say your server is really slow and the data doesn't actually return that quickly. Well, your UI might hang for a long time and it actually uh, prevents your users from interacting with the tab bar buttons on the very bottom. So make sure to watch out for that. And so on a side note, what happens a lot during job interviews is that they'll look at your application code to see whether or not you're handling asynchronous activity correctly. So if a company actually sees this, they might actually knock you down a couple of points. And I know some companies will actually just reject any applicant that doesn't know how to actually do asynchronous behavior correctly. All right, so aside from a couple of these minor bugs, I think you're doing a really good job so far. And the last thing that I really like about this application is the ability to search for movies. So I'm going to try to search for Wonder Woman, which I think is a really good movie. So let me search for that. And you see how Wonder Woman shows up at the very top. And uh, it's done actually very, very nicely. Now, however, there's one small issue again, which is every time you tap on a different piece of text on the search bar, let's say DER, you notice that the search occurs or it actually happens three times. So you want to somehow put a delay using a timer so that you don't hit the server so many times. And uh, basically, if you don't have a lot of users right now, this doesn't really matter. But let's say you have 10 or 50,000 users trying to search at the same time. If they're all hitting different text inside of the search bar, then it's going to hit the server, causing it to be really, really busy and basically slowing down your entire system. Now, you can kind of see if I hit Wonder Woman, it does this search like six times, and it really only needs to do this search one time. So if you can get rid of all of those first five unnecessary searches, uh, your servers will actually perform a lot faster. And also at the very end of the day, it's going to save a lot of server costs for you. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I think Leo did a really, really good job at implementing all of the features and functionality inside of his application. Uh, I know it takes a lot of time to actually get the design done correctly and actually fetching all of this data from the server so that it displays correctly on your screen is actually very time consuming. So very good job in getting this done uh, correctly and everything looks really, really nice. 
And finally, if you're interested in learning about how to actually implement some of the features inside of this app, such as the grid of movies inside of your home view, as well as pagination, uh, make sure to check out the Instagram Firebase course using the link in the description below. We actually go over how to implement this grid type of view, as well as integrating pagination with Firebase data. So make sure to go check that out. That's going to be it for me today. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.